Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Patricia Mejias. Um, I am a water resources officer in the Land and Water Division. And I'm going to talk about um, irrigation in the context of, of climate smart agriculture for this webinar. So, the presentation will be divided in two main parts. In the first part, I will talk about the state of water resources. And, and irrigation, and which are the future projections for, for water and irrigation. And then in the second part of my presentation, I will talk about um, adaptation and mitigation options for irrigation in the context of climate change. I would like briefly to explain you for those who are not familiar with, um, with irrigation and, and water issues, two important concepts of water, which is um, blue and green water. When we talk about green water, we are um, talking about the water that is used when uh, the rain falls. And this is basically the water that is used by rain-fed agriculture. Then, when we talk about blue water, we are talking about the water that is abstracted from rivers, lakes, and also the room water. And this is when we talk about irrigated agriculture. In this presentation, we are going to focus on blue water because um, we are talking about irrigation. As you know, we have um, access to be very little of, of the available water that is um, available in, in our planet. We have only access to 2.5% of um, fresh water uh, resources. And from this, all 70% um, of our water withdrawals are used by irrigation. And in addition, um, there is a huge competition with other sectors for, for water, for, for, for industrial and also um, domestic water resources. So the importance of, of, of blue water for irrigation is, is key, because when I, I mentioned before that irrigation accounts for 70% of water withdrawals, but when we talk about water consumption, irrigation accounts for 90% of the global blue water consumption. On the other hand, 20% of the total cultivated land area is used by irrigation, but irrigation is responsible of the 40% of the total food produced. So this is to show you um, this global map of irrigation areas uh, developed by FAO is to show you um, where the area equipped for irrigation are located. Um, so, as you can see, the major irrigation areas are located in India, in China, in Pakistan, and also in the United States. Um, I think this map provides very useful information on where future um, imbalances of the water availability may cause of, or worsen food production uh, risk. And this map is to illustrate the river basins where water stress is being um, um, high in, in irrigated agriculture. Uh, the map shows water stress as the percentage of the incremental evaporation due to irrigation over the available resources. Um, um. So you can see. Uh, that the greatest stress are indicated by red um, coloration. So you see that parts of North Africa, Middle East, and Central Asia um, are the areas where blue water stress is very high. So in this situation of, of water scarcity, we need also to consider what will be the future importance of irrigated agriculture. So according to the projections of FAO, 
the demand for food and other agricultural products is projected to increase by 50% between 2012 and 2015. And 60% of the extra food requirements in the future must come from intensification in agriculture, which can come from irrigated agriculture. So this is a very challenging situation that will be uh, exacerbated by climate change. So in this um, picture, you can see that uh, the main impacts of climate change in, in the water balance. Um, so climate change is likely to um, change the precipitation patterns and also to increase the temperature. And the main impacts can be uh, an increased water requirement, demand from irrigation, increased rates of evapotranspiration. And this will be particularly important in, in areas with current water stress. There will be also an increased evaporation from, from water bodies and wetlands and reservoirs. There will be also an increased variability of precipitations, more extreme events such as drought and floods, increased precipitation intensity that may decrease groundwater research, more seasonability of the stream flow, and also reduced water quality due to higher temperature and lower levels of rain runoff. So, if we consider um, the most recent report of the Intergovernmental Panel of Climate Change that has been published in 2014, um, climate change is projected to reduce renewable surface water and groundwater significantly in um, dry subtropical regions. Overall, there will be an increase in global water resources availability, but the uneven distribution is likely to reduce its utility for, for, for agriculture. There, there have been many studies on what will be the irrigation demand um, and, and for water resources. So some studies say that there will be an increase in irrigation demand by more than 40% across Europe, USA, and parts of Asia. But that freshwater limitation in some of the irrigated rations that we, we have seen earlier could necessitate the reversion to, to rain-fed agriculture. I would like to stress that the impact of climate change should be also considered in the bigger picture of water scarcity. Um, there are other many factors um, that uh, are, are, are also very driving changes in water use and that will be affect water at much faster pace than, than climate change. There are, for instance, uh, the need for, for, for the competition with other sectors, uh, the changes in diets that are demanding more water, and climate change is expected to bring additional burden to already stressed systems. 